So tonight, as you've already probably noticed, and we have a kind of we have a, an agenda that's broken up. Uh, we, the first part, the first 30 minutes, which you've already been through, has an opportunity to kind of uh, on your own work through some information uh, in engagement stations. We had housing, economic, uh, uh, mobility, open space, and I think arts and culture. Uh, some information there to dig into, also some questions to get you thinking. And then this next session is about a 30-minute presentation about existing conditions of what uh, our consultant has pulled together. Um, I'm going to take a step back uh, and just say that this is our Plan Beverly process. This is a, a comprehensive master plan that we're working to develop it with your participation. We, uh, the, the planning department's working closely with the mayor's office and UTIL, which is our consulting team. Um, I'll introduce them in just a moment um, to prepare this plan. It's going to be about a year-long process. They've been on board for a couple months now. Uh, and the whole idea with this is to engage the community to develop a vision for the city of Beverly in the future. Where does the city want to go? Where do we want to be as a community? So this is the first step in that process. There's going to be a number of opportunities to engage with the city, with the consultant and uh, city staff uh, to make sure that your, your opinions, your ideas, your thoughts um, are built into this plan uh, so eventually as we, we move to implement um, it, it's something that's a shared vision and something that we all can get behind. So uh, without getting into too much de detail what I would like to say is part of the presentation is a more detailed analysis of what or overview what the plan is going to be, some existing conditions uh, analysis and then an overview of, of the kind of engagement opportunities that you will have. Uh, and then following that, about 7 or 8 o'clock, we're at 7.30 now, 8, 8 o'clock, we're going to break for another opportunity to then engage with the, in these different stations with city staff. We all have kind of special name tags here, the consulting team, um, and give you an opportunity to ask questions, comment, and then, and again, uh, as, as you will, add comment on to the uh, uh, response and engagement uh, workstations. So uh, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce the mayor, uh, who can uh, make a few comments before we start the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Folks, thank you so much for being here. This is an amazing turnout. It makes me so happy to see this kind of engagement. And, and Bev Cam recording tonight so that everybody can watch and, and hear the presentation. Uh, this is, as you'll hear, this is the first of all kinds of public engagement opportunities over the next several months, so thank you for being here. We hope that you can get more friends and family and neighbors involved going forward. Um, just fantastic. As Aaron said, there won't be a formal Q&A as you sit here after the presentation, but we'll be up here to answer questions individually, and as he said, moving around and checking out all the displays, you can get more questions answered and a chance for your own input. Um, I want to acknowledge several of our local elected officials who are here. Uh, City Councilors Paul Guanzi, Scott Hausman, Estelle Rand, uh, Julie Flowers, and Don Martin are all here. Thank you. Our partners in local government. And it, well, he, gets his own, he gets his own shout out now because he just came from, from somewhere else that we were together. Councilor Tim Flaherty is here as well. And from our, from our school committee, we have school committee members, Lorinda Visnick, Chris Silverstein, Rachel Abel, and John Milady. Thank you all for being part of this. If, if I've missed an elected official, I apologize. Raise your hand, I'll get you. Not an elected official. Nope, we've got them all. Oh, State Representative Jerry Paracella. Thank you so much, Jerry, for being with us. And Senator Lovely's office, who's here from Senator Lovely's? Oh, that's, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and, and I, yes, thank you. Uh, we also have several candidates for local office here. Thank you for your interest, both in being here and in putting your names up and running for office. That's a great thing for our city. So look, uh, Corey and Tim have a lot to share with us, so I'm gonna stop right there, except to say one more time, thank you, thank you, thank you for being involved in this. Thank you guys again. Um, there we go. My name is Corey Berg. I'm with UTIL. It's an architecture and urban planning firm based in Boston. Um, and we are leading the consultant team for Plan Beverly. And we're really excited to be here. And we want to thank you guys again for such a great turnout. This is amazing. Um, so I'm going to start by going into what is Plan Beverly and a little bit of why we're doing Plan Beverly. So a comprehensive master plan is a citywide plan 
Um, it presents a long range plan with um, a community vision, comprehensive analysis of what's already happening here, um, and where we want to go in the future. It'll also include a set of recommendations on what we can do to take us there. Um, the plan itself is going to be a really collaborative effort. We have a huge slate of engagement events that we'll get to in a little bit, but we really, really want to hear from you all. And we want all of your voices to come together to create this vision and, like I said, work to get those recommendations that can put us there in, to fulfill that vision in the future. Um, so it'll be a very inclusive citywide discussion. We'll have a number of different engagement opportunities. You'll see us around town this summer, um, and we're really looking forward to hear from you. So Beverly is really fortunate that we've already had a lot of planning here. Um, this is actually a list of all the plans that have been done in recent years. Um, everything from a housing plan to an arts and culture plan, um, and a lot of focus on the environment and resiliency. So what this comprehensive plan will do is bring all of these individual efforts together and pull it all into one vision where these all kind of fit in. So this is what's going to be covered in this plan. Um, Massachusetts requires a certain number of what they call plan elements to be included in a comprehensive master plan. We'll put our own little spin on these, but these follow what you saw around the room already with a focus on economic development, housing, mobility, cultural and historical resources, open space, and the environment. So we'll definitely cater this to what's important to you all, but it'll include some recommendations across all of these different topic areas. And I also want to reiterate that sustainability is a really big theme in this plan. Um, and when we think of sustainability, you know, it's not just environmental sustainability. So social sustainability, economic sustainability, and environmental sustainability will be woven through all of these different elements. So when it comes to economic development, we're thinking about how can we set Beverly up for a sustainable future in terms of jobs, different industries we're bringing in, and stuff like that. I just wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to our team. We have a couple of our sub-consultants here. Um, Matt Smith is in the back. He's from Nelson Nygaard, and he's our transportation consultant. Jessica Robertson is also with UTL, and you'll meet Tim Love, who's also with UTL in a little bit. Um, but this is our team. It's a, it's a mix of um, economic development, transportation, and um, environmental planning. So this is how we kind of get to all of those different plan elements by bringing in all of this different e expertise. So the project is kicking off today. Um, thank you guys for coming, as I said. Um, it's, this summer will be this big engagement push where we want to hear from all of you in crafting a community vision. We're then going to go back with the consultant team and kind of flesh all of that out into a plan, craft a set of recommendations, and we're going to bring those forward to you all for your input. Um, so that will take place for the, for the most part in the fall. Um, and the goal is to have a draft plan done in January and have it ratified in March. So this is a, it doesn't seem like it, but it's a pretty tight timeline. Um, but we're really looking forward to getting as much input from you all as possible in the summer and the fall. So now I'm going to introduce Tim Love. He's the principal at UTL, and he's going to give you an overview on where we are today and some of the existing conditions work that we've been doing. Um, I, again, my name is Tim. I hope you had a chance to look at some of the science fair we have for you today. Um, uh, it was uh, in a way to uh, get you to start to um, understand at this early phase of the plan how we're looking at your city um, through a series of lenses. And uh, one of the ways that, that we like to do that is to use um, uh, maps to uncover things that might not be obvious from the ground or walking around or driving around. So um, this, this map analysis that we do tends to begin to suggest possibilities for the plan, um, but we also tend to discover things that, that are, are, are generally interesting to people that engage in these kinds of processes. So I'm going to talk about uh, some of those uh, discoveries that we've made. Um, um, the first is, um, this is what's called a land use map. Um, and for those that have been involved with planning processes before, um, the same color code is used um, across the country. Um, yellow is residential. Um, 
red is a, a commercial or commercial mixed use, um, uh, uh, but um, and, and blue is institutional or those uh, parcels that are either universities or city or state owned because they don't typically pay taxes. So um, the land use map serves a couple of purposes. It tends to tee up decisions about land use policy, um, which uh, uh, most broadly gets converted to zoning, but it's also the lens by which um, a tax assessment is done because those color codes also have to do uh, with different tax rates. So um, uh, land use maps um, serve a couple of masters and so they're not necessarily um, the best tool for planning, but they're a good overview. And just to give you a sense, it might match up with your mental map of the city of Beverly. Um, all the yellow areas are um, uh, residential neighborhoods um, of all kinds. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, those uh, uh, red uh, colors that you see uh, are either downtown or, or Cummings or a single uh, corporate campus um, that's near the Pride's Crossing. That's a, that's a big spot of red but that, because that's one parcel. Uh, again, these colors are per parcel, not per building. Um, and um, uh, there's also uh, uh, some industrial uses in the, in the city as well. So um, maybe that matches up or not uh, as you're driving around of how you see and understand Beverly. Um, uh, then a, a related map, but not precisely the same one, is um, uh, the zoning map for the city. Um, and the reasons that zoning maps don't always match up with a land use map is because some of the uses in a city are legacy uses before the zoning changed. Um, one of the observations here is that um, there's more yellow on the zoning map than there is on the land use map. And that has to do with um, historical decisions that have been made about land use policy. Um, but you can see that um, uh, the zoning map goes a little bit crazy downtown because there's um, a uh, higher uh, density of a uh, kind of built environment with um, more of a hodgepodge of uses. And when you get to the more suburban and rural areas of the city, uh, the land use gets fairly uh, homogenous, which is the yellow. Um, and you'll also notice um, some of those uh, uh, oranges and reds flaring up in North Beverly at the shopping center there, at the, at the, at the train station. Um, and also uh, uh, at Beverly Farms, where there's some commercial uses that happen there that are um, uh, tied to current land use policy. One of the things that typically becomes a question when we do citywide plans is whether um, the land use policy, and specifically the zoning, should be tinkered with or not. And so um, that's usually one of the things that we evaluate, whether uh, the current zoning code um, uh, uh, syncs with um, what people think should happen in terms of um, preservation of land on the one hand um, and smart development on the other. So we'll be, uh, I think, spending some time with you on that particular issue. Um, the other thing that I think is very interesting about Beverly, what, the, the reason why um, we were so gung-ho about doing this plan is because in a fairly, you know, um, kind of concise geographic area, you have like all of the parts of a much bigger city. Um, you have on the one hand a walkable, super interesting, beautiful downtown um, with nice curving streets that create all these incredible kind of uh, views downtown um, that um, most cities in America would die for. And then you have um, this, uh, this other kind of unbelievable landscape um, uh, the, the kind of scenic drives uh, as you move um, west and north from the downtown. So um, you've got it all here. And I think one of our goals for the plan, this might be a little bit provocative because I'm only talking about existing conditions, is to preserve that difference of environments here. To preserve the open space and the scenic drives and all of those things that make Beverly amazing from a kind of environmental standpoint on the one hand, but also enrich the downtown and make it even more walkable and even more awesome. And I think um, we're gonna be looking very hard at um, uh, maintaining that, that kind of diversity. This is a, this is a map that shows um, uh, uh, the housing units per acre, which is um, a metric that's going from land use to land use plus density. 
And you'll see that um, uh, there are just more housing units per acre downtown, it makes sense. And then that gets very thin when you get to the more rural areas of the city where um, houses typically are on two acre lots or larger. And so again, that, that's a virtue, I think, in terms of the kind of character of the city that you have all these incredible landscapes all in the same place. Um, but that might also, um, in terms of your own understanding of the city, make some sense. I don't know if you can see the key or not, but this is showing housing units per acre. I can look here. Um, the other thing that um, is unique about Beverly is that you have five commuter rail stations in a city of your size. Um, they have different frequencies of service, different riderships, actually in, in, in sometimes radical ways, but um, that um, idea that um, uh, the T stations in a way are a kind of snapshot for different places in the city is also interesting for us and was a way that we got into the finer grain of Beverly fairly quickly, which is that we drove and walked around at each of the commuter rail stations to really see how diverse your city actually is. You know, the difference between, um, uh, you know, Pride's Crossing and Beverly Depot in terms of a commuter rail station couldn't be more extreme. And um, uh, that, to us, uh, was a way for us to think about the citywide plan, not just at the abstract scale, but in terms of what the built environment was actually like and what qualities it had. We always want to be working between planning as an abstract policy question, but also in a way the kind of design of your city um, and what it looks and feels like. Uh, uh, that's one of uh, the things that we're going to want to stress. Um, uh, the other thing is that um, uh, uh, the, the other measurement we wanted to look at in the map is, what, is what's called the floor area ratio which is the percentage of, of square footage of a building on a parcel relative to the size of the parcel itself. It's, it's another measurement of built density. Um, and you'll see like um, the, the, the housing units per acre that um, around the downtown and especially around Beverly Depot, um, the numbers get, the, the color gets much darker gray. And when you get to other parts of the city, um, there's just a very light gray wash. Again, that diversity of environments is very important to us, but it also suggests um, in terms of potentially tinkering with land use policy um, where uh, development might get steered so it does good and where it might not want to go so that we can preserve those um, qualities of existing uh, uh, residential neighborhoods as well. So we're, we're, we're looking at um, kind of better shaping uh, uh, those kinds of decisions as part of the plan. Um, uh, very interesting, uh, this is population density. Um, each dot is a person. Um, it's not actually where the people are. Um, it, it randomizes them within a census tract. Um, and we had to monkey around with the GS, uh, GIS file so that weren't any people in the open spaces. Um, because in the first draft, somebody asked us if people were camping in the conservation lands. So, we redistributed the dots where at least generally people should be. And um, it's remarkable the, the difference in concentrations um, uh, in, in terms of what that looks like. Um, and that's important from a, a policy standpoint because um, in some cases, there's a lot of uh, people near commuter rail stations. And, and in other places, there's very few. And that um, probably syncs up with uh, kind of ridership at those stations as well and their relative convenience. Um, um, we took the same um, map uh, and we mapped race. And so um, it might be hard to see uh, with this projector in this room, um, uh, the colors we've assigned, the races don't mean anything. Um, but um, uh, white is yellow, Hispanic is purple, Asian is blue, black is green and red are all other, and you see that um, in, in some parts of the city there's more diversity, in other parts there aren't. No more than that, but um, it's a map that we like to do, because again, as the planners, it gives us an excellent snapshot of, um, uh, uh, you know, from 30,000 feet about um, both the density and the cultural composition of the city in some ways. Um, the other thing that um, uh, we think uh, uh, will be an important issue. Again, our existing conditions analysis, um, this sounds insane 
includes many more things that are even around the room. So we're, we're, we're presenting the kind of highlights that we think might suggest potential strategies is um, the, the age spread in the city. Um, it's very interesting. 17% um, of you all are um, 65 and older. Um, but there's also a, a spike in age from ages 45 to 65. And that means that um, typically um, in communities that show that range of population, that those people are moving towards 65. I'm 57, I'm moving towards 65 very rapidly. Um, and that has an effect on um, how the housing stock is being used, um, how many single family houses have one or two people in them, um, whether that housing stock is getting um, uh, uh, liberated for families to occupy or not, and where seniors generally want to live if they want to stay in uh, Beverly. So uh, we're very interested in that end of the, of the, uh, uh, the graph. Um, but you also see a spike in people 20 to 24, and, and their decision or not to stay in Beverly or make other decisions uh, as they make other decisions on their lives as well. So um, again, I'm probably over um, editorializing here, but um, uh, it was very interesting for us to see this information. Um, another way to look at it um, is in this bar graph, and we wanted to just um, um, compare it to um, some other cities to understand what this meant. Um, uh, we're looking at different comparative cities for different reasons. Um, you might say, Natick, what is Natick doing on there? They have, uh, 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 they're in the same commuter rail zone, and they also have a couple of commuter rail stations, and the demographics otherwise sync up pretty well, although they don't have a beautiful coast, but that's a whole other issue. Um, uh, but you'll see that um, uh, actually um, uh, those numbers aren't too far off from uh, some of the other peer cities that we're looking at. So this is a, a, a regional issue and not just a Beverly issue. The, the kind of aging population, um, uh, the people 45 and older, and what that means for housing supply. Um, the other thing that, that um, is um, unique for Beverly is that um, uh, you have um, more people coming into Beverly work than you have, uh, than you're exporting people out to work, which actually surprised us. Um, uh, 3,700 of you either work at home or drive someplace else in Beverly. This is a fairly healthy mix of um, export and import. You're not just a bedroom community. Um, uh, we uh, have drilled into that a little bit to understand uh, where people are driving to and where people are driving or commuting from. I meant to say driving or taking the train there. Um, uh, so that, um, I think, is another fertile territory for us to understand. Um, can we get the people who live and work in Beverly, that number up through some policies? Can we understand actually the points of origin for people that are working here to see if they can get to work in better ways? Uh, these are all questions that we have. Um, and then, um, uh, uh, this is, you can't read this, uh, but, um, uh, but it's, it's juicy facts here. Um, we're going to post the slideshow, by the way, uh, if you want to dive in. Um, but um, uh, a, a look at um, where most of your jobs are. Um, uh, healthcare and related uh, jobs are, um, are uh, going gangbusters in Beverly. Um, and that includes not just um, uh, the hospital, the medical center, but all the allied kind of healthcare uh, kind of businesses that are in the city. Um, professional and technical services, um, lawyers, architects, um, engineers um, uh, is also uh, ranks very high in terms of the, the jobs that you have in the city. Um, and then you have on um, the other end, um, uh, those uh, job numbers that are dropping off. And I, um, I'm going to point out that uh, retail trade, because of other global changes that are happening to retail, uh, those jobs are dropping off. Um, wholesale trade is also dropping off. Um, and manufacturing jobs, which um, maybe won't be so, so, so surprising to you. But um, we're going to dig into what those mean, too, not just to understand 
the, the impact, uh, uh, the, the things that are impacting that, but um, potential economic development strategies that might leverage some of the things that we discover in these numbers. Um, that's probably all I can say about, about this at this point. Um, construction jobs um, and real estate brokerage jobs are booming because of the kind of development kind of cycle right now. Um, so those are t t tend to be up um, during development cycles. Um, so this shows you um, maybe in a clear graph uh, uh, which, um, which jobs are growing and which ones are, 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 are shrinking in Beverly. Um, and I think I've already talked mostly about uh, what some of this means um, uh, in terms of um, maybe trends that might suggest strategies relative to availability of commercial real estate. Um, you know, is there enough commercial real estate in town to meet demand? That's one of the questions we have. Um, uh, are, is there marketing the city can do around um, some of the ecosystems of some of these job sectors that might uh, get more jobs in the city, maybe drive more commercial real estate taxes, that kind of thing? Um, these are the, the top 10 employers. Um, many of you might know this, but um, Beverly Hospital is number one. Uh, Endicott College is number two. Um, uh, but you can see that um, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a range of companies there that don't always, in terms of the top 10 employers, quite sync up with the total jobs and what sectors they're in. But again, um, uh, we um, I wanted to make it clear that in addition to kind of land use questions around zoning and housing, um, we're also very interested in um, in uh, job balance too to make a kind of healthy, complete city. So uh, I, that's um, kind of what I covered. Um, many of the boards um, around the room um, uh, include some of this information, but take some of the analysis one step further. So if you're interested in any of these partic particular topics, um, seek out the boards and one of us will be back there to answer more detailed questions. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. Um, my name's Darlene Wynn. I'm the Assistant Planning Director. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about some of the things, the ways that we want to uh, increase involvement in this plan and have really full involvement. I think as the mayor and as Corey said, our, our goal is to really have uh, reach a broad cross-section of people that live and work in the city as part of doing this plan. Um, and so we're going to do that in a variety of ways. Um, we'll have, we have this workshop, and we'll probably have three more workshops like this, um, maybe different structure. I think we have two open houses like this, this one and another, and then two that are more like workshops. Um, and those will be defined as we go along. Um, we will also be doing surveys, so those will be available vo both in paper and email, or online. Um, and we hope that one of the surveys will be available very soon, um, maybe by the end of the week. Um, I invite everybody to sign up for the email list on our website, which I will flash um, shortly. And then whenever something goes up on the website, we'll, we'll send you an email and you'll be able to access that. But I also invite you to just come back and check the website often. Um, we're also gonna have an interesting online engagement tool. It's um, an online mapping system where you can go in and kind of log or, you know, something that you love about Beverly, like this is my favorite open space, or, you know, a particular challenge you have, you know, like I can never find a parking spot near this location. Anything. Um, and so that's a really interesting and unique, unique tool that we're excited to use. And that also will be available on the website. Um, we're also going to do additional focus groups and smaller neighborhood meetings, and we'll be doing those throughout the summer. Um, and finally, um, you can find us at Art Fest. We have a booth there. We'll have a booth at Lobster Fest. And we're going to try and get out and get to as many different events so that um, you don't always have to come to us. We're going to try and come to you guys. Um, and so on the left, that's the website. Um, we also have a Facebook page. Um, and on the top, let's see, that is how you can sign up for our email list um, to be sure that whenever something goes up on the website that we want you to see or do, um, we'll send an email out. When I say whenever, I'm not going to blast you with emails all the time. I think, you know, check back often like this, what, this presentation will go up there, and I'm not going to email people to say the presentation's up there. But when a survey comes out 
when the mapping system goes live, um, when we're going to have new meetings, um, or any other the existing conditions data goes up there. I'll try and consolidate it and be respectful of your emails, but um, it's a good way to, to find out more information about the plan. Um, I'm going to throw a plug in. As you're walking around um, up here, we have these little boards that say, my vision for the future of Beverly. Um, we want you to write down your vision, and we'll take a picture of you with it, or just your board if you don't want to be in the picture. Um, but um, it's a fun little exercise, so as you're going around, come over here, and we'll do that too. And thank you again, everyone, for coming. Do you want to? Thank you, Darlene. I'm back here just because I forgot to do one of the things I was supposed to do, which was recognize and, uh, recognize and thank our Master Plan Steering Committee. We have a 15-member steering committee made up of people from all over the city. Um, we, we're trying to get every, every single demographic in the city to be fully represented in this process, and we've tried to do that with the Master Plan Steering Committee as well. If you are a member of the steering committee and you're sitting, would you please stand and wave? And if you're standing in the back, would you just wave vigorously so everybody can see you? These are people. Thank you for the work you're doing. And, and these are people who are going to be part of helping with the outreach and, and putting together things such as neighborhood meetings, et cetera. Uh, and they're here to, to get your input and, 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 and keep that dialogue moving as well. So thank you. And now it's to the, to the boards and any individual questions to us. Thanks, everybody.